<laughs> Actually, I haven't. That's a good point. Uh, I haven't questioned it. Um, I never questioned my mother's love for me growing up. <clears throat> and yet, when I did start to create this individual nature, the grip got really tight. Mm-hmm. I've got the hiccups now. Mm. I think it's a, something in me talking around this topic. Mm-hmm. Ooh. <laughs> It just came out of nowhere. I've just got the hiccups all of a it's sudden. Interesting. Brilliant. Yeah. Live here on Deja Vu. <laughs> Talking about my mother and all of a sudden it's got taken down. <laughs> my the wave of hiccups. The subconscious speaks. Don't <laughs> speaking my truth. Mm. The, the grip is actually what can create more suffering. And so there is an acknowledgement of when there is the time for the mother to let go. And I think... It's far easier said than done. Mm -hmm. And yet, if I want to truly come into a place of empathy and compassion for that peace, I get to acknowledge where it lies in my life Mm -hmm. too. Because I don't have a child. And I haven't had a child in my belly for nine months and had to birth it and go through the initiation of what that even looks like. And then from that place, raise that child for 18 years and pour every single penny that I make into making sure that that child's life is the best child's life I, could, uh, life I could ever give. And then slowly have the dawning realization that that child is a complete alien from another dimension and is going to do things that are going to trigger my deepest fears and insecurities and worries. Oh, I'm oh, so sorry. No. Oh, man. Like, shake my head. Change my, my name. Do plant medicines in the Amazon jungle. Get a tattoo. Yep. Pushed it over the edge with that one. Yeah. Yeah. And... There's the profound soul contract, right? I think the relationship that we have with our actual blood parents, there's some of the most profound curriculum that is available in those dynamics. Mm -hmm. Um, Precisely because these attachments, (laughs) (laughs) these these deep bonds of attachments are so, so, so strong and present. Mm -hmm. It's the ultimate initiation. And I, I... I remember when I was a child, we went to this this place and it was some exotic country. And they had a, uh, a very bizarre, actually, looking, looking back on it. I don't know whose idea it was to have this, but there was like a tank or a cage of baby chicks in the entrance of a hotel. Uh-huh. And you could go and sit with them and you can hold them. Okay. And I remember that I would pick up this one of these chicks and I was a child I was very young and I, I didn't fully understand like how tight you were supposed to squeeze them uh oh I don't know if I like where the story is going <laughs> no <laughs> animals were permanent, permanently damaged <laughs> maybe just momentarily and I would pick up the chicks in my excitement and my laugh at a chick and yeah. just fly and scream and I would squeeze the chick and it would yeah. pass out oh god and then about two minutes later it would come to again and this I was, was like, a oh, no. repeated occurrence sorry <laughs> Who was supervising you? I tried you? one more time and I picked up another one. Passed out. Oh, wow. It's not my proudest moment. You got carried away, didn't you? <laughs> so into it. I was so into this little chick. I was like, you should be caught squishy and you shall be mine. Yes. And ultimately, it's causing more damage to hold on so tight. Yeah. Because I love you so much. Yeah. And so... Ultimately, when, you, when I look at it from a meta perspective, how my, my mother and myself are such medicine, medicine for each other because there's an invitation to let go of, of control. And there's also simultaneously for me an invitation for me to, um, to own my truth while simultaneously honoring my mother's truth. Mm-hmm. And the maiden kind of just goes, fuck you. Mm-hmm. Where the mother starts to understand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And that is ultimately my journey on this process. It, it started off with, well, fuck you. This mm-hmm. is who I am. Stop trying to project your control onto me. Ultimately, what it actually is, is I love you so much and I don't know any other way. Please teach me. Mm. And that actually is more powerful. Yes. Well, I'm learning. Yeah. And my tone has drastic, drastically shifted since season one. Mm-hmm. When this is all really happening, as I, and I was in the thick of it. Yeah. And so as I go to the archetype of the mother, we're now rolling into a deeper level of empathy and understanding for mothers across the board and mothers that are birthing project or birthing things into the world. As we 
mature and grow up and the tension starts to dissolve between the maiden and the mother. Mm -hmm. So if your mother called you right now, what would you say to her? I love you. I do. I've never stopped. I've never stopped loving her. Mm -hmm. I love her with every single cell of my body. And honestly, the time that we spent apart. <gasps> oh, there's a big hiccup. Wow. This, my body's really talking to me. Mm -hmm. I should probably reach out. Um, is I've been able to get away from the controlling, which has created the, or the gripping, which has created the resistance, which has created me to fight back. And I've actually been able to see her from more of a withdrawn perspective, which is a deep appreciation of what she's given to me in my life. Mm -hmm. And the privilege that I've had being raised by my father and my mother in my life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm and deep appreciation and acknowledgement that she's doing the best that she can with the awareness that she has. Mm -hmm. So there's less of a fight in me now. And it's more of like, I'm here to listen. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I cannot, I cannot suppress a part of myself to appease mm -hmm. you. I, I cannot, but I can listen and I can stop fighting and kicking. Yeah, and it's, it's the, 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 the more the control, the more the clinging creates the suffocation, the more energy is required to push away from that and break free, right? So that defiant energy, that rebellious energy is, is in direct response to the amount of, of, of suffocation that is experienced or, or censorship or restriction. And once you've broken free and the pendulum swung far in the other direction, now there's like this, it's coming back into a state of, you know, there's there's a set there's a there's a a harmonious sort of middle ground that that you're starting to to anchor into where mm -hmm. you're not compromising your truth and you're not bending in order to appease but you also aren't in the antagonistic energy of needing to exert resistance towards the thing mm -hmm. that you experienced as being uh suppressing yeah and i yeah. take full ownership of that energy within, within me that stubbornness yeah. Yeah. um fighting and it serves a purpose sometimes, you know? Yeah. Sometimes it's necessary for survival. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To maintain the innocence of truly why I came here and who I came here to be. Yeah. Entirely. <sighs> so powerful. Yeah. Yeah, this is, this is essentially the, the narrative of the archetypes. Yeah. And understanding the archetypes so that we can understand ourselves in a deeper way, recognizing that it's not something outside of ourselves. Again, it's the fractals of the diamond so that we can birth it through because you know i think there's so much power in the archetype of being the seductress mm -hmm. and feeling that and allow any of the shame around sexuality to be transmuted through this archetype while understands the simultaneously the shadow of the seductress is using that to get power over mm -hmm. others so you know as we know the shadow as we know the light we can really understand it and and navigate the energy in a healthy outlet Every archetype has a shadow. Every archetype has the gift. Mm -hmm. And when we know the shadow, then we reclaim our power back from it and we can use more of that energy for the gift to move on through it. Yes. Is there anything else that you feel called to share about the, ar the archetypes um, and your journey with relating to the archetypes and how it shows up in your experience? I feel called to ask questions. Amazing. <laughs> I got the hiccup still. You go back with me, fam. We're in this together. We're in this together. <laughs> the diaphragm is spazzing out a little bit. It's yeah. all good. It's just, you know. Do you know what the metaphorical response is to hiccups? I know. Hiccups? I'm sure there's the heal your body, heal your life would give you some very profound download about that. Yeah. Louise Hay, right? Or something? Louise yeah. Hay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She would know. She has it in a book. It'll say hiccups. And and it'll say something about yeah. hiccups. Yeah. Maybe that's speaking. Maybe Andre can Google it for us right now. Yeah, we've got Andre on the, on the computer just <laughs> looking like a snag over there in the corner. Speaking of, my question <laughs> yeah. is related to your intimate relationship and Ooh. the fact that you are going to be, may I say your age? I imagine I am. My age? Yeah, you're about to be 30. I'm a transparent book. Let's go. I know, baby. You're about to hit the big 3-0. 3 -0. Oh, and so damn. That is also coming out of the Saturn return, coming into... A new chapter, a new decade. I'm coming out of Saturn Return. I think you are, baby. I think it's time. It's so funny. When you say I'm coming out of Saturn Return, I'm a very visual person. I'm an yeah. artist, right? So, like, I get visuals in my head. I get pictures. 
And the visual that I got for all of you that are potentially watching the video content of this, I'm like coming, I've gone through the birth canal, so I'm returned, <laughs> and I'm literally like Wiping. out of it, and I'm like this. <laughs> And I'm covered in slime, and I'm taking my first really deep breath, and I'm like, ah, ah, I made it onto the other side, and I'm trying to return, and I'm just cru cruising. You know, wow, that was a hiccup right through the middle of the word. Cruising into my 30th rotation around the sun, like an arrow mm -hmm. pulled back, and then projected forward with all of that power. I see it. Yeah. So anything that you want to share about your journey of the the... Next decade that you are beginning, your, the way in which you are stepping into that, the queen that you are becoming, and the journey for you from, from maiden to mother, also in you know, your relationship as well as your, your creative expression, your, your career. Well, first and foremost, the thing that I'm really noticing is on a physical level with mm -hmm. my body. Um, I'm noticing that my ovaries, uterus, and all lady reproductive organs are going, now is the time! Oh, Let's yeah? have a baby! Wow. And I'm like... Biological clock's fully kicking in already. The biological clock is like... Let's have a baby. Um, <laughs> wow. Yeah. The singing and dancing. Yes. Um, Andre's quietly exiting the space. Yeah. <laughs> Just... Pretending like he didn't hear any of that. Shriveling down to a piece size. I'm 23, give me a break. Uh, uh, uh. Um, yeah, so that is uh, definitely present where I'm, mm. I'm, a, I'm around children now and I'm like, oh, mm. and I just melt. Mm -hmm. And I, I just had a flashback to you with the, with the chicks again. Oh, God. <laughs> Please, I hope I don't pick up my small children and no, suffocate you, them because, you, you, because of my life. Oh, God. He was supposed to be the professional one. Uh, he's got his alarm going off because he's helping us to reset yes. the camera. Thank you, Andre. <laughs> um, yeah, I just noticed that uh, I'm starting to get quite broody. Ooh. Like, my body is. Yeah. And simultaneously, I don't feel actually like I'm ready. If mm -hmm. I was to make a decision, if it was up to me, I don't feel ready to fully to birth a life into this world yet. I still feel like I'd like to create a few things before. Yeah. And that, that happened. The container. Yeah. Ultimate, ultimately, I really want to set that child up to have the best life possible that I can really possibly give. And I think that I, I can still probably be a little bit selfish right now. Mm -hmm. um, maybe that will shift I don't, within... With it, if I was to have a child within my, my body, um, I would that would shift. However, as it stands right now, I'd like to be able to set up first and foremost that the nine month gestation period of the, of the baby in the mother's womb is the most luxurious, fun, elated, ecstasy, ecstatic time of my life. That I am cooking this child in the oven in the sense of marinating in pure bliss. Mm. Because my study with the, with the, with the gene keys is that your genetic coding starts when you are in the nine-month gestation period where you're in the mother's womb. And so um, the, the, fab the fabric of who you be as an, as an adult mm -hmm. is laid down of how your mother's emotional experience is mm -hmm. when, um, when, you were, when you were banking there. So for me, it's about continuing to set up commitment, mm -hmm. things that I am creating now for a future timeline. Mm -hmm. So commitment uh, to you is something that exists beyond the present moment. Yeah. I mean, if I want to buy a house, mm -hmm. which would feel really good to me in this lifetime, I'd really love to buy a house and I'd really love to walk into a house and go this one mm -hmm. and have the resources to be able to do that. Well, that is a long term thing. Like, that requires me to go, oh, okay, I just made $30,000. Amazing. I'm going to put that into a savings account mm -hmm. because I'm thinking of the trajectory of, at one point, I'd like to buy a house where the maiden in me goes, oh, $30,000. You know what I can do with that? All right, we're going yeah. to Bali. Yeah. 
and then we're gonna go here, we're gonna do this, and all of a sudden, thirty thousand dollars falls through sands. It's that sand like holding through with your yeah. fingers open. It just melts through the cracks. Mm. So it's like, what is my trajectory in my timeline? And I think thirty. I, ultimately, I don't want to associate myself with a number. However, I do think thirty is a beautiful archetypal time to move from the maiden into the mother and to actually to be thinking of a future timeline for the greater good of myself and what I want to birth onto the planet and what I want to birth through my relationship and what I want to birth within my family, um, soul family and blood, to be thinking more from that lens. So it, it's a scan. Where am I, first and foremost, not trusting myself? Where am I f- falling into the trap of liking the, the moment of the instant gratitude, gratification as opposed to the long vision? Where in my life can I actually get really clear with myself of what do I actually want? Mm -hmm. And how can I start implementing these into the very small moments? Mm -hmm. Because that was what creates the big ones. Yeah, that that theme has been very present for me too in this transition from maiden to mother, which is like looking at all the little ways in which I want to, again, escape reality in service to something that feels more pleasurable in the moment. And Benjamin and I have the saying, we use our full fuck yes to discern what I want most over what I want now. And one of the most prevalent ways that it's shown up for me is in my relationship to my physical body as well, in my relationship to actually becoming strong and fit in my body, which is something I've always wanted my whole life. And I never was willing to move through the resistance to actually become consistent enough to actually build muscle and, and, and see the results that I knew were possible. And there's, there's, there's actually almost no, there's almost nothing that's like more honest than your physical body because it will, it will reflect back to you exactly your internal state, right? So when I look oh, in the mirror, sorry, that's a tough pill I know to it's a tough pill to swallow, but when I look in the mirror and I've, you know, been consistent for two weeks straight,